Welcome to worship. Visitors are asked to sign the guest's book in the parlor or fill out a card in the pew and place it in the offering plate. The Valley Food Pantry is requesting all varieties of canned vegetables. Place your donations in the grocery cart in the vestibule. Lutheran Disaster Response is asking for funds to help with the weather-related disasters and wildfire fires throughout our country. If you wish to donate, write your check to our church and memo LDR. The table to share your Bountiful Gardens produce is in the parlor. Individuals with extra produce from their gardens can leave it on the table before the Saturday or Sunday church services. If you would like any of the produce, we are asking for a free will donation which will be given to the Valley Food Pantry along with any extra produce. When leaving your produce, please put it on the table in the parlor and not in the shopping cart. This week, the Wednesday morning Bible study will begin at 11 a.m. They meet the first and third Wednesday of the month. Wednesday evening Bible study meets every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The quilting ministry starts up again on Thursday at 9 a.m. They meet the first and third Thursdays of the month. Family fun and game night will begin again next Sunday, September 8th at 5 p.m. Bring a snack to share and your favorite game. Help is needed on Thursday, September 19th at 9 a.m. to make applesauce. 
Please come and join in if you can. Preparations are underway for the Apple Fest to be held on October 19th. Sign-up sheets are on the table in the parlor for help the days prior to and the day of the fest for the bake sale and apple pies. Please sign up where you can. Also, items are needed for our cancer awareness turkey tray. If you wish to donate items, place them in the pink box in the parlor by September 22nd. We have been asked to add Albert and Jackie Walk to our prayer list. And Fred would like to talk about God's work, our hands. Good morning. Next week is both Rally Day and God's Work, Our Hand Sunday. We are concentrating our efforts on feeding people this year because it's the 50th anniversary of Lutheran World Hunger, ELCA World Hunger Fund. I want to make sure everyone is prayerfully discerning how they can participate and how your kids or grandkids might participate in some of our outreach events this month. Permission slips will be handed out during Sunday school next week so the kids can visit the Valley Food Pantry on Sunday, September 15th during the Sunday school hour and also go shopping at the Valley Hometown Market uh, during the Sunday school hour on Sunday, September 22nd. The kids will be purchasing the most needed items for the pantry. Please remember to bring your change for our noisy offering next Sunday to help fund those efforts for our shopping trip to help the Valley Food Pantry. And if you forget, we'll collect again on Sunday the 15th, of course, accepting quiet donations such as bills and checks. Also, I hope that all the adults are considering to volunteer for our outreach efforts uh, next week we'll have sign-up sheets in the parlor for those who wish to help prepare a lunch meal for the Hartwood Center. This will happen immediately following Sunday worship on September 29th. And there'll be a sign-up sheet for those willing to serve the meal and do cleanup at the Hartwood Center on Monday the 30th. And those doing that can, will be meeting here at the church at about 11 a.m. or at the Hartwood Center at 11.30. We encourage everyone to wear their God's Work Our Hands t-shirts for these weeks in September to support what our kids are doing and what we're doing as, as far as feeding people this month uh, and also contributing and collecting funds. Uh, we need to encourage each other to do our part in sharing God's love out in the world. And each of us can do different things individually. Thank you for supporting and showing God's love to those who struggle with hunger. Thank you. Oh, and I guess we're done the announcements so we can stand for our gathering hymn.
sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing.
Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. So now Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you or take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has the God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Please join in reading the psalm. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill? They do not slander with the tongue, they do no evil to their friends, they do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. They do not give their money in hope of gain nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls but be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Mark's Gospel today depicts Jesus as challenging traditional ways in which religious people determine what is pure or unpure. For Jesus, the observance of religious practices cannot become a substitute for godly words or deeds that spring from a faithful heart. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders, and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, for example, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me all of you and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. I am looking out, do we have any young people here today that want to come up? I don't want to embarrass anyone. You might have some visitors. You do not have to if you do not want to. All right. Oh, there is one? Oh, yay! Excellent. Oh, I can use mirror words with you. Excellent. Today we're going to be talking about traditions. Faster. Yes. Oh, one more. Yay! Thank you. Do you understand what a tradition is? Excellent. Um, for Thanksgiving, maybe your family gets together all the time, and Christmas time, and you get a Christmas tree up. Well, Jesus is talking today to these very intelligent people, or these Pharisees, saying, well, I agree with many of the laws that you're observing, but you have things a little confused, because there were some laws that were really difficult for regular people like you and I to follow because there were so many of them. We're going to be hearing the Pharisees that we heard today about washing hands. That is not the scriptural law at all. That's what they determined to do at that time. And Jesus said, you can practice every tradition that you want, but if in your heart you're not loving and not serving me, you would miss the message. So, that being said, when I preach today, you'll get to hear some of the traditions I grew up with and you'll get to giggle. But just know that there are some traditions that are wonderful and excellent, and others that just might not make a whole lot of sense. Okay? Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your children today of every age. Keep them with open hearts and minds to learn more about you each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth help each one of us to love broader, wider, and deeper. In your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 
For those of us who have been fortunate enough to see the play Fiddler on the Roof, you will remember Tevia, the main character, singing tradition, tradition, mm, tradition, 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 mm, tradition. And what he does is he's explaining to the people in the town long dissertation, and every person gets to say what their tasks are as a papa, a mama, a daughter, and son. And boy, you did not break those traditions. One would be that your father picked your husband or wife. Though I'm thinking of myself, and it might have been better if they might have done that for me, just saying. <laughs> Not that my husband wasn't wonderful, however. But <laughs> Very odd traditions went on in the day. What's really important to know, there was not just 10 commandments that the Jewish people had to follow. They had what they called mitzvahs. There were 613. 613, which some of you might have known already. I cannot even imagine how you could focus on anything but those rules with so many. And that's what Jesus' point was. Jesus had a lot in common with the Pharisees, much more in common than not. But he wanted to explain to them, if all you're doing is paying attention to the law, how will you have time to love one another? You're just checking off everything of that 613, making sure you're doing it correctly so that you can be in God's good graces. That sounds extremely difficult to me. I certainly would not have to want to follow 613 laws. Anything involving numbers is not my greatest thing. For example, tradition or scriptural? A tradition that I grew up in, I'm sure there's a lot of us women that remember that we had to wear dresses to school. Yes? For those of us who are not femininely particularly inclined, this was a disaster for me personally because I loved gym. I'd always wind up with a ripped hem or a skinned knee or just looking so disheveled when I went home. But miraculously, in fifth grade, someone came up with the brilliant idea of pant suits. <laughs> they were really bizarre looking, I have to say. They were polyester, eh, not the best fashion thing. But if you fell, you didn't bruise anything or scratch your knees. It was just like heaven for me. And I'm sure our children cannot imagine I was talking to a couple of gentlemen last night at Zion who said that they had to go to school in suits every day. Did anybody have to do that here? Re Aaron, you did? Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Right, special days, yes. I don't know how people, young men, can learn properly all day long in a tie and a suit. I would be so uncomfortable. I only have to wear this when I preach and if I do a hospital visit. I'm very thankful for that. Ties, eight hours a day would just, makes no, one of those traditions that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. First of all, if you get a stain on a tie, you may as well throw it out. And they're expensive pieces of wardrobe. But these are some of the silly things that we've had as traditions. Um, not so silly, and people believe that it was scriptural, that women were not to be preaching. And there are still denominations that believe that, God bless them, that's okay. But there really isn't anything scriptural that Jesus said that supports that whatsoever. But 
I don't like to get in arguments with people that won't go to church unless there's a man preaching because it's just not the best thing to do for my state of good health. <laughs> but there's another example. Um, one of the most important things for us to understand is all of these scriptures today talk about obedience to God. Obedience to God's laws, not man-made laws necessarily. Even when I marry couples, oftentimes they'll not want to use to love, honor, and obey. Notice though, both the man and woman say that to one another. And that means obey one another under God's law. Obeying one another under God's law. Holding ourselves accountable to someone far greater than ourselves. There are many miracles that occur with some very prayerful and thoughtful men and women who go beyond what those traditions might be and step out into something new and life-filled. And I was fortunate enough to visit with Tom Quavman yesterday, who I always enjoy visiting, and I got permission to tell this story to you. He was serving a church, and one of the members, they were having a Catholic wedding, one of the members of his church, and the other member was Roman Catholic. And he and the priest at St. John Bosco, Bosco did, this is in the 70s, did the service together. That priest offered Pastor Tom the Eucharist and asked him, how do you Lutherans believe about the Eucharist? Do you believe that it's the real body and blood? And Pastor Tom said, yes, of course. To which the priest then invited every single guest up, including the Protestants, to receive communion. Wow, that was the best story ever. In the 70s, yet, yeah. didn't matter what the Pope said, God bless the Pope, didn't matter what the bishop said, God bless the bishop. But he knew in his heart, which is what Jesus is talking about today, our hearts, what was the righteous thing to do for the people that attended that wedding in 1970 whatever. There are miracles, people, every day. They happen. They're amazing things. Which is why I really love God's Work Our Hands Sunday every year, because it offers us a prayerful opportunity to see what our gifts are to contribute to someone else. Because our Lord's telling us today, you can speak whatever you like, but unless your actions show that you're invested in this kingdom, living, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. Not just to people that we love, but to our Lord. Please continue to discern the difference between what a tradition might be and what is scriptural commandments. Of course, Jesus followed all of the Ten Commandments. He said nothing about Torah. He wanted to introduce something new to these learned men in his day, which got him in a lot of trouble, we know. But in this day and age, we can speak out when we think something that is going on is not exactly as Christ or God would want it to be. So next Sunday, we'll get to start with God's work, our hands. We'll have our children involved as well, <coughs> focusing on hunger, not just here, but in the world, which is a huge concern for our Lord, so it is for us. Let us love our traditions that make such joy and honor God, and let us very carefully think, hmm, what makes sense in God's world and what does not? In Jesus' name, amen.
together in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. God of every generation, give the church a sense of purpose and belonging. Sustain and build up leaders and lay people as we accompany one another in our life with Christ. Merciful God, God of creation, you named humans as co-creators with you. Where the earth cries out in pain, bring wholeness. Guide governments and industry that environmental laws and practices seek to heal and not harm. Bring relief and justice to people and places suffering from climate catastrophe. Merciful God, Sovereign God, we pray for communities of every kind rural and urban, established and new. Lead those in authority to seek the good of all through their words and actions, and to mentor others in honest and generous ways. Merciful God, healing God, you draw near to all who are hurting. Be with all who desire relief from chronic and acute illness, cancer, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Strengthen health care workers, therapists, and caregivers. Tend to those who are close to our hearts. Merciful God, on this Labor Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all who have fought for our workers' rights around the world. Continue to improve working conditions and establish fair wages so that all people may thrive. Merciful God, comforting God, console us as we mourn our departed. We hold fast to the promise that death has been defeated by our Savior Jesus Christ. Merciful God, in the name of the beloved child, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the
In thanksgiving for our offerings, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. our table and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. 
You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. receiving in the pews that don't want me to come out there and those at home. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. You have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. 